Today we'll be using SCP, also known as the Secure Copy Protocol, to copy a file between two remote computers. SCP will allow you to share a file through the command line remotely using an SSH connection on Windows 11 here. For my example here, I'll be copying from this Windows 11 setup here over to one of my Linux computers that's on my local network. This of course can be done over any type of connection as long as you have an SSH client installed so you have access to the SCP command. I'll write back on my Windows computer, going down to the search bar, and I'll search for a terminal or a PowerShell. With Windows 11, you have Windows Terminal. I suggest using this one because it's probably the easiest, but it will launch just regular old PowerShell. You can launch that as well, or even Command Prompt. This is going to work across the board. And what's nice about Windows 11 is that you get the SSH tools installed by default. We don't have to install anything special to use these commands. So once I have a PowerShell or terminal started up, I wanna confirm that SCP exists. Might as well do this before trying to issue commands. I'm just gonna type in SCP and press enter. It's telling me the usage here is SCP, followed by some flags and then the source and target computer. If for some reason SCP does not give you this, probably means it's not installed. I can help you with that as well with the link in the description below on how to install it for Windows. So we are making a little bit of an assumption that the computer where you're, you have remote access to actually has an SSH server already installed on it. One way to check, at least here in Linux, is to open a terminal and do PS, AX, pipe, grep, SSHD. You don't necessarily have to do this if you're confident that you do have the service running, but this just tells me as a process, SSHD, the service for SSH is running in the background. This just stands for SSH Damien. Now that I've confirmed that back to Windows, and since we now know that we have SCP installed on this computer, we're going to continue by typing in SCP. Then I'm going to type in the file and location of the file that I want to transfer. Let's create a file real quick. I'm going to use notepad here. I'm just gonna type in Savvy Nick is transferring a file over remotely using the command line. I'm gonna save this to my desktop as SavvyNick.txt and hit save. Now with that saved on my desktop, I'm gonna continue. So now I'm going to transfer this file using this command line to my Linux computer. The first argument that goes after SCP is the location of the file on this com current computer. So my absolute path would be C drive located under my users folder, savvy nick, under the desktop, and we called it savvy nick.txt. Now it doesn't have to be a text file, it can be any sort of a file and any extension. You can transfer all files with SCP. You can even transfer folders over. And I'll show you how to do that as well. But for now, let's stick to a single file. We'll now need one space and we'll specify a target location. In order to specify that target location, we're going to need to know the IP address of the remote computer where we're trying to copy the file to and the username. We'll also need the password of the computer. So mine's the Linux computer that I showed before. And my username there I know is Savvy Nick. That's the user I use to log in to my Linux computer, followed by an at symbol, and then I type in the IP address. In case you need to find the IP address and you don't know what it is, you can do that on Linux by doing IP space A. Notice right here in iNet, it's telling you what it's currently connected to. I only have one ethernet adapter, so it's easy to find which one. Typically, you wanna make sure that these three bytes of the subnet match the one that's on your other computer. It doesn't have to, but if they're local, just a good check. Anyways, this is the IP address I need. So I'm going to write this down or copy it. And that's how you check on Linux. IP config works on Windows if you need it. Anyways, I'm gonna type in that IP address. It was 172.168.1.132. I'm gonna make this bigger so we can see things a little better because this next part is important. We need a colon. Colon separates the IP address from the location that you want to put the file in. Let me show you what I mean. So now I'm gonna type in a slash in the location where I want my file to show up. For example, home, savvy nick, and I'll just throw it on the desktop folder located on my Linux computer. So we're going to copy a file from this location to a computer with the username savvy nick, and its IP address is this, which has OpenSSH server already installed on it, and anything preceding the colon is the location of where I want that file. So 
in home savvy nick on the desktop so if i press enter now we should start the copying process so if it's your first time connecting up to a remote computer it's going to say hey i need to add this one to the keychain and create a fingerprint for it so are you sure you want to continue connecting so you can type in yes you'll have to type it in that way and now i'm being asked for a password so it says it's added the ip address to the known host fantastic and now we're being asked for a password so what's the password well it's the password for this user that you specified earlier i'll put in the password that i use to log into linux notice it will not show up while you're typing that's okay it's still being put in just press enter after you've typed your password in if things are successful you'll see this file name got transferred over a hundred percent of it and it was very quick since it took less than a second to transfer over since there wasn't really much to that file. So let's check things out on the Linux side. But before we do, make sure to smash that like button and think about subscribing below. I'm trying to get to 50,000 subscribers. It'd be much appreciated. So now I'm back on my Linux desktop. And if I look in the background, I'll notice something on the desktop. I see SavvyNick.txt. We'll open this up and see what it says to make sure it is, in fact, the file that we transferred. And it says SavvyNick is transferring a file over remotely using the command line. So congratulations, if you made it this far, you've successfully copied over your first file using SCP, the secure copy protocol. Now let's try sending over a folder from the Windows side of things. It's going to be a very similar method, but let's open up the file browser so we can create a folder somewhere. I'm gonna add it to documents this time. I'm gonna hit new folder, and I'm going to call this one folder, how original. I'm gonna enter in this folder and this time I'm just going to drag and drop Savvy Nick inside of here. So the documents folder contains Savvy Nick now. All right, so to transfer the file over, we'll go back to our terminal or command line. I'm gonna clear things out and I'm gonna start out by typing SCP again with a space. Now important here is we do dash R. This means copy whatever we're about to send over recursively, such as everything and all the contents inside of the folder that we're specifying. So we'll need the dash R. It's important to copy over the folder. And I'm gonna do another space and then specify from what folder location. If I do C, users, Savvy Nick, that was in the documents folder this time. And then it was called folder. Now I get to specify what computer I want to send it over to, just like we did before. Again, to the same location on the Linux computer, Savvy Nick at my IP address, and then the location after the colon, for me, that was 172.168.1.132. Yours, of course, is probably different. Then I want that in the slash home slash savvy nick slash, and I'll put it back on the desktop once more. Notice one thing, these slashes are different from each other. That is important to notice because Linux and Windows use different slashes, so just make sure you're doing them the right way. All right, then I'm gonna press enter here, and I'm being asked for my password again. And I'll type that in, press enter, and now it says again, SavvyNick.txt was copied over 100% of it. This one was a breeze as well. Let's go check out the Linux side of things and make sure our folder now exists over there. All right, folder exists as well on this one. Let's make sure that there's something inside that folder. Launching it, we have SavvyNick.txt. Awesome, so everything copied over correctly, including the directory and its contents. This, of course, can work in the opposite direction as well. Meaning if you want to copy a file over from Linux or even Mac OS over to a Windows computer, you can do this as long as you have the SSH server installed on the Windows computer where you're trying to transfer the files over to. I also have a video on how to set up an SSH server on Windows. If you want to transfer between Windows computers or Linux to Windows, I'll put a link in the description below so you can check that one out as well. And that's about it. These are the varying methods in order to copy a single file and a folder over to a remote computer using SCP as well as I hope you found this tutorial helpful. And if you did, make sure to share it with someone. Catch me in a great community on Discord and I'll catch you in another video. Thanks for watching. Linux can be hard to understand, but I take the most commonly used terms, commands, and subjects in Linux and I break them down into simple to read documents, including Linux terms, flashcards, a checklist, a cheat sheet, 
and a mind map. And if you're ready to level up your Linux experience and knowledge, go to learn.savvynick.com now and get access to these sheets.